so I think everything, everything okay. is online at this point. Um, and then the minutes from the last meeting were sent out to everyone. If you had comments, show something back. But I think those are already been signed by AJ. I'm still waiting. Okay. And we have one item outside of the agenda. Is that right? Uh, you have your annual report that I need your signatures on. Cool. That's okay. Um, we'll now get to the public hearing, and we're starting with ZAP-23-2, which is 410 North Street. Um, do we have the appellant here? Um, is anyone else here to speak on this matter? Um, I'll swear you in, but since this is an appeal, we'll have the city go first. Um, so, um, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth on a pain and penalty of perjury? I don't know if that's what I do. Okay. Um, which, this would be mine. Keep it brief. I'm sure you've all read the staff report. Um, 
So yeah, essentially, yeah, I want to just connect the two units. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know why Mary keeps using pergola. It's, it's going to have it, um, a roof, so it's, it kind of looks like a pergola, I guess. But um, it will be a solid, solid roof. Um, and it also kind of serves two purposes. I also do want to, um, obviously want to try to make this a duplex, but I also have snow plowing issues, um, so it would, that was also part of the intent. Um, second page, you can kind of see the picture of what it looks like currently and what I proposed uh, to look like. Um, and then, so yeah, my reasoning for why I think the definition um, would grant me approval is the definition makes a point of saying regardless of type of construction which to me implies the roof does not uh, substantially transform the two detached buildings into one uh, single structure. Um, if the duplex definition wanted to limit what would constitute a single structure, like the stats now suggest, it would use the opposite language of regardless of type of construction. Um, there's no language in the audience that also excludes this from achieving a definition, um, like Brad just mentioned. Um, and I also just wanted to bring up the, the last applicant that tried submitting this. Um, he never fully submitted his permit, so it was never formally denied. Um, I don't know if that matters. Um, and also, if you if you just, I know this doesn't matter, but I put this in here. If you Google the cap structure, um, it pretty much says a structure or building joined or fastened to another structure or building by any means. The only one I could find that didn't say that was a Pakistanian that popped up. So, um, and then going to um, the Eve issue, um, I, yeah, I agree with Mary that by Article 13, the definition of Eve does, does not apply here. Um, and it also would have um, extended to the side of setback. Um, but the roof was designed with the same intent as uh, Eve to throw water away rather than the, um, the definition of Eve says to throw water away from the wall. This one, since there's no wall, it's to throw it away from um, the cars in this case. Um, and then also per section 5.25B, except it's yeah, side your setbacks, it does say Eve overhangs and then um, to add what Mary had run, it also says um, similar features. Um, so to me, yes, it doesn't have a wall, but it's pretty much the same thing as an Eve. To me, it would be a, a similar feature. Um, and also section 5.25, um, parking areas are exempt from setbacks, and 5.25 BA, um, 8, and 5.35, um, the roof does not increase the degree of non-compliance in this case as the current um, left setback. It's a weird setup, but my neighbor's house, my house is built right next to each other, they're touching, and so the setback there is zero. Um, so it would not be increasing the degree of non-compliance. Um, and if the board doesn't agree with any of these ex exceptions, um, I'm willing to make it 1.4 feet narrower um, so it wouldn't it would comply without any of the um, exceptions. And then, uh, just summary, um, I guess I've already kind of covered everything, so I can skip that part. Can I ask a basic question? Yes, sir. Why do you want this to be a duplex? Why does it need to be a duplex to achieve your purpose? So it's pretty much the owner occupancy. Um, I was, when I first constructed this place, I was, it was kind of, my dream to do it. I was planning on living there for a while, but then um, an opportunity came up where I had, I'm now building a house in Charlotte. It's kind of an even more ideal dream situation, so I'm planning on living there afterwards. Um, okay. And I really, I built the accessory dwelling, I put a ton of effort into it, I would hate to sell it. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I have a question for Mary. There's no definition in the CDO for type of construction, right? I mean, that was part of the appellant's argument was regardless of the type of construction, but is there a definition of what that phrase means to us? Not, not that I'm familiar with. We do have the definitions that I've mentioned for what a duplex is and yeah. what a heap is. I, I don't, I mean, typically, in the building code, there's lots of definitions of type of construction, and I would think that, that might be what it refers to. Mm -hmm. uh, like construction techniques and materials more than anything. Yeah, there's fire rating and different classes of construction for different types of construction they define.
questions? It seems that you're still going to have the, almost the same snow plowing issue, even with this roof, and that you're still going to have to backdrag that area or snow blow it or something like that to be able to plow snow. Well, yeah, so the, the problem with the snow plowing is um, so it's kind of there's a driveway that goes right down the middle. So right now the, um, the plow will push all the way in, but my neighbor's fence is right there. Yeah. So if you and it's already like pretty much you have to park right up to that fence um, for you to not back into my neighbor's um, property, which if she was here, she would um, make a strong point that you can't do that. Um, so um, the fact that the cars have to push all the way, if you, pu if you push snow up to that fence, then you'd create a buffer of then having the snow in between the fence, and then that would push the cars even further back yeah. to, turn, to make the turning radius smaller. So you have to backtrack it. What's that? You have to back drag the snow right now with the plow. Uh, well, yeah, so right now we pretty much, you have to shovel. So I go out there and shovel and throw it over the fence, which luckily those neighbors are a little nicer than my other one. Okay. More lenient, I'll put it that way. Thanks. We have no definition for type of construction within the CDO. Thank you. Not seeing any other questions. Any remaining comments that you wanted to make? No. Okay. okay. And, and then I guess I'll make one more point too. So when it says there, um, it's in a definition exists in the, um, I don't have this in front of me, but it says like you can use, um, if there's no definition that exists pretty much in the Burlington ordinance, then you default to the um, American Insurance Association's definition. And the FEMA definition of a structure is um, something with two rigid walls and a roof. But I think Mary found that as um, adverse findings. So. Um, thank you. With that, we'll close this public hearing and move on to the next item on our agenda. We may deliberate tonight. Um, but well, thank you, everyone. The next item is the AP-23-3, 25 Oak Ledge Road. We have the appellant here. I am. Here. Is anyone else here to speak on this item? <coughs> no. Okay. Um, I will start by swearing you in. Um, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth under a pain and penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. Um, and then since this is an appeal, same as the last one, we'll have the city go first. Um, is this yours as well, Mary? It is. I've got a handout if I can. Um, we'll have the city go first and then. Wonderful. Okay. Has this gentleman been sworn in? I just yeah, did. I just okay. did it. All right, fine. Mm -hmm. um, 25 Oak Ledge. Um, Thank you. Uh, this is essentially, uh, essentially, it was a request for a parking, to establish a parking area in front of a, of a single family home. Um, if you have your um, staff report in front of you, I would direct you to page three of the staff report. It's an unusual lot um, with irregular boundary lines. Uh, zoning uh, amendment a few years ago uh, provided a footnote for waterfront properties to establish a front yard setback. So that setback now um, is the maximum is 50 feet from the front property line. So on page three of the staff report, those red annotations are mine, showing the front property line in front of the house for the 50 foot setback and the proposed parking area falls right within the front yard setback. So that's one prohibition within the zoning ordinance from article eight that there shall be no parking in the front yard setback unless it's within a driveway, um, a driveway leading to parking spaces or, or parking in front of a garage. So the next issue is a limitation and location of use of facilities and also the description of the zoning ordinance it says parking spaces in all residential zoning districts shall be located in the side or rear of the principal residential structure. So as the parking area is proposed in front of the residential structure, it's contrary to this standard. 
And again, parking is located within the front yard setback, which is also a prohibition. So the permit was administratively denied. The appeal was filed in a timely fashion. And that's the question before you tonight. So there's no provisions, Mary, for the garage in this case is in the front of the house. So the remedy is that they have parking separate from the garage? The illustrations that are provided as guidance within Article 8 allow parking in front of a garage access, as in you may um, park in front of your garage. Your garage may, in fact, be converted to living space if you're parking in the driveway in front of it. Those parking spaces are allowed, but this is the creation of an additional parking area off of the driveway in front of the house. And is that, that's because of the description of that area, whereas, like, in my view, this could also be viewed as a turnaround area. The application was for a parking area. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Brad? As the driveway currently stands, they can, they can, they can park on any part of it? As it currently exists? Yes. Um, or, at least, or at least any part of it that is on their property? Well, again, if you were to look at the, at the diagram that I've included that the applicant has provided on page three of the staff report, it's a very uh, sinuous access. There are at least three drives coming up to this house. It's an existing situation. The, dri the drive area on the immediate south goes right to the garage. I can't explain how the other paved areas were created, certainly not under this ordinance. And I did meet with the applicant in February to discuss design options. They chose not to revise the plan because they like what they're asking for. So, so isn't the, in the current plan, the only quote unquote legal approvable space would be right in front of the garage. That would be an approvable parking space. Correct. And the rest there is not really approved for parking because it's all within the front yard setback. Correct. So they have whatever the width is there for parking spaces. Hmm. Any other questions for Mayor? I guess I want to follow up on Leo's question. I, I am confused by the, the current proposed the current layout has this sort of circular drive or maybe multi-pronged drive. They could drive up right now and park in any part of that driveway. Uh, under, well, it's pre-existing. I don't know how it became what it is now, but under today's ordinance, they could drive up and park right in front of their, in front of their garage. I'm confused by, I guess what I'm confused by is the Article 8 definition. It says, parking spaces shall not be located within a front yard setback except within a driveway. And it's a little confusing. And located to the side or rear of the principal structure. There are some guidance illustrations within okay. Article 8 itself. Um, I did not include those, but you can imagine a driveway accessing, say, a two-car garage. And Article 8 would allow you to park right in your driveway in front of the garage, whether it was a garage or whether it was enclosed for a more habitable space. And so the real issue, though, is the little buttress to the left, if I'm looking at the site plan, because There's already a curve and a pad generally in front of the driveway. I mean, there's a, there's a northern prong of the driveway which seems to remain in existence. Then that comes to a pad in front of the garage, 
both in proposed and existing. The real issue is the deviation from the you know the creation of that extra sort of squared off pad area uh, to the south of the south sort of east, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Can I ask it a different way? If they left the existing driveway in an exact configuration, but just took off the portion of the driveway that goes down to the road, so they had like a little tail, yeah. could they well, still that, park in that? That alteration is creating front yard parking. Okay. So it's no longer a driveway, it's only parking. So, again, but, if, but, but just conserve, let, let's try this a different way. If they took off the northern prong and left the southern prong, they could park there. Because that's now a driveway. Right. <laughs> that's how Mary's interpreting it. Right. Okay. I think. I mean, yeah, I think no, that's right. right. And I, I would remind you the request itself is driveway layout modification to accommodate parking. Yep. Okay. And they're clearly adding to the existing. It's bigger right. than these. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now the appellant has forwarded <coughs> to me and I have uploaded the last image is is new, was just uploaded yesterday morning. And I would direct you to look at that. The site photos or in five no no submission to get it. Just I have to find my way. I have that in paper if it's easier to find. It is it. called So is this an submission screening May 1st. mechanism? The desire is to, from the homeowner, as I understand, the desire is to add additional landscaping to screen the house and the drive area from the public way. Yeah. Is Oak Ledge Drive a public way or is it just Austin Drive? No, no. no. no, no it's uh, South Cove down there. And Oak Ledge is private. Uh, I believe this uh, property owner owns the road. And our appellant may confirm that. Oak Ledge is a private drive down there. So, but the, the setback is measured from Oak Ledge Drive? From the property line. Okay. Well, maybe we can ask the applicant about that. <laughs> Any other questions? For staff, we can turn it over to you now if you want to yeah. pass out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do have specific knowledge about the, some of the things that, or I do have specific knowledge, I guess I should say, about some of the things that came up, and I try to clarify them. We should, although well, property records, Thank you guys might have. Do you want this one, Brad? That's good. I got it from David. Sure. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. I guess I would like to clarify the language in the application doesn't ref in no way coming from me referenced putting in a parking spot. Our submission to the city, and we could probably dig through the records, suggests that we wanted to change the driveway layout. We wanted to remove hard surfaces and replace that with plantings. The homeowner of this property has been in residence for quite some time, and she has always felt exposed on that rise of ledge and has wanted to be able to provide herself a little buffer from the traffic on Austin Drive and Oak Ledge, or Austin Drive and South Cove intersection. As landscapers, I don't often have to defend our um, our projects because generally they're viewed as quite acceptable. We're trying to make things better. In the case for you, we have tried to meet the homeowner's intention of reducing impervious surface 
increasing vegetation, removing lawns, and reconfiguring the driveway. The current driveway, as you can see in the picture, leads you right to the garage, and from the street side, it's, um, um, in our view, we would say exposing the garage door, and that's not the most interesting thing you can look at. This is my perspective as a landscaper. And so if the customer is asking us for screening options so she feels a little more secure in her courtyard, um, she specifically wants to reduce the hard surfaces. And she, we've done some incredible plantings there in the past, and she wants us to keep doing our, our good work. When I applied for the permit, I didn't say we were putting a parking spot in, although that parking spot, as Mary describes it, is the egress, and you can see on the third page there a little demonstration of how a car might want to pull out of that driveway, or out of the garage. In order to meet her goal, uh, not, well, one of her goals is preserving the trees she's got, mature oak trees that are there that are contributing to wildlife and contributing to shade and contributing to moisture management. Um, so she, in order to put a egress in that we need to, she needs to be able to back out of her driveway comfortably. She's not a young lady. And so we wanted to provide her with the most reasonable way to back out and go forward. We don't want her to be the gal who goes through the donut shop window. Um, so those were the, that's a description of the project from my perspective. Um, in terms of the setbacks uh, and the road, she does own the road. Um, if you were to measure from the closer side in this picture, she's outside of the setback area. There is nowhere to put parking on her property <coughs> other than closer to the lake, which doesn't make any sense. And she's not looking for parking. She's at, in her age. She's not entertaining. She's not looking for, looking f to have people over. She just wants her private place. Um, were there other questions that I didn't address in that um, description? Sounds pretty straightforward. Being removed. But you are expanding. There's an entrance that comes up to the driveway right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The footprint of I'm the backup you. area is a little bigger. I'm with you. Yeah. We are overall in the project removing hard surfaces. Uh, we have changed due to, you know, the um, traffic turning studies that we've done. We've changed the orientation of that. Uh, we call it a hammerhead in our business. Um, and so when she backs out of the driveway, she'll engage the turn so she can then get herself out the um, new um, route. So that's why that configuration changed. So I guess I'll ask it this way. Um, would it be used as a parking space or not? She uh, parks in her garage. Yeah. But is it the desire to create a hammerhead turning space or parking? The project description that we submitted to the town, the city, said that we were reconfiguring the driveway. Uh, that we're considering to be a reconfiguration. It is not intended to be a parking spot. Uh, if somebody parks there, um, she often has the garage door open. And if somebody parks there, they could they could park in front of the garage, which would then lead them, say the lady with the vacuum cleaner, could go right in through the garage door, which is her so typical way of doing it. comfortable with no parking in that area? If someone said that that, if like the permit were approved on the condition that there is no parking there, she would accept that.
I guess I, Mary, I, I guess I'm confused by one thing here, or a couple of things. Usually, we are happy when people move towards more compliance when they have something that's non compliant like the amount of driveway, the different radiuses and accesses and everything else. And as in this current driveway, just because somebody can park somewhere doesn't mean that the parking space. You know, I mean, that's, we, well, that's, that's how we, we have to count. Somebody has to have a legal parking space, even if they have the places to park that are not complying parking spaces. So in this case, the only parking space they have that's legal right now is in front of the garage. Well, in the garage. No, in front of the garage, because you can park in the front yard setback in front of the garage, right? In the driveway. That's a legal space. Well, the, the garage spaces are also legal. Right, but I'm on, on the Other driveway. Other than those. Right. So, Brad, you just said it's illegal to park in front of the garage? No, no, I said it's legal. Oh, it's legal, legal. okay. And so in the... That makes more sense. Right. So they have all this pavement, and there's only one area they can actually park in on the pavement that's legal, and that's in front of the garage. So why doesn't that apply to the new one, where they can have all the pavement they have, which is less than they have right now, and the legal space is the same one they have now in front of the garage? Why worry about this other space just because somebody could park there? Because the specific request before me to review administratively was the creation of a parking area which is identified on the site plans in front of the house within a front yard. So what what identifies it as a parking area? And like maybe are we missing something from the original application? So I'm reading the cover letter and it says <coughs> application for a zoning permit on behalf of the applicant. Marisha Taylor to approve a revised driveway layout and associated site features. On the appeal. I'm reading the February 2, 2023 driveway modification card. Can you hear everything this application that was submitted February 13th. The description of the proposed project is driveway layout modification to accommodate parking for residents. So if the applicant is willing to accept a condition that says there's no parking in that area to turn around only, does that resolve your zoning? Your ordinance concerns? My belief is this is the deliberate creation of parking in front of a single family residence. I can't say that I'm catching And if not this if not this owner resident, then how would we ever follow this through subsequent residents? The owner got a email of support uh, recently. They didn't share the details, but a neighbor um, effectively was pulling their hair out to see that she had to defend the uh, project on um, her neighboring property to the south. What's that little side road called that uh, has got a few houses on it? directly south of hers there's a little south cove east, east, east minway that's it so on east minway the neighbor lives on east minway they say everybody's got parking in front of their house that is true and then further on oak ledge there's a parking spot on in front of a house um, and so and yeah. i'm not here to make a parking spot for her i'm here to let a nice little old lady get in and out of her garage right, we, we appreciate that um I can say in project review for other properties on the street where they have pro pro proposed something similar, we have guided them under the ordinance regulations and said this is front yard parking, it can't be approved. So that doesn't even come before you when our staff is working with applicants during project definition. Hmm. 
close it. Yeah. Um, no other questions from the board? Okay, with that, we'll close this public hearing and move on to Thank you. the next item on the agenda, which is ZP-23-141, 80 Archibald Street, Cannabis Home Occupation, and I'm gonna pass it over to AJ. Great, is the applicant here? Yes. Welcome. Okay, great. Um, so would you raise your right, you haven't been sworn in yet, I imagine? I have not, no. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear to give that the testimony uh, in the matter under consideration is true and correct under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Um, is there anybody else here to speak on this application? No? All right. Um, so just seems like a very narrow permit request. Um, just you want to use 54 square feet of your basement to cultivate. That's correct. It's, it's my cannabis. house, and that's correct. Legal cannabis. Um, yeah. Have you seen the staff conditions? Staff. Have you seen the staff report? Um, I don't under I, what I, I don't understand what you're asking. So the on staff report on what? On the, you yeah. This is the staff report. Yeah, that's the staff. Yeah, so okay. the city staff before our hearings puts together a staff report. Okay, that's and what yep. And, and I had forwarded a link to that on two occasions prior to the hearing. So um, yep. there are some particular conditions in there, and I was wondering if the board had any specific questions um, before I asked this. Anybody from the board have any factual questions? Well, I guess it, just to know who's who would be oh, helpful. Oh, I'm Ishmael. I'm yeah. Ishmael Ahmed. And you are, you're do, you live there? You're yes. <laughs> okay. He's I'm, nice. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble with context. I think part of this whole process is that I'm, I'm familiar with it. Okay. So Just trying to who lives in the house. Is, oh, we both do. Okay, that was my question. We both live, no. okay. live in the house. All right. All right. That is my occupant. That's my residency also. What, I, what I'm trying to ask is, do you have any issues with the staff report memorandum you have in front of you? Um, I'm not too sure what particular issues you're, you're speaking of, but I know there are some questions that you all have for me. Maybe. Maybe. On, on page 8 and 9, there's a list of conditions yep. as recommended by staff, and that's what AJ is specifically asking about, if you're okay with all of those conditions as listed. Let's see, letter of adequate water to sewer capacity, have that in progress, um, in the process of getting the state licensing. Of course, that's also dependent on information that they get from the city of Burlington. Mm -hmm. So we're in a bit of a chicken and egg situation here. Um, let's see, expansive of the whole vacation. Um, yep, any expansion, that makes sense. Um, Yes, residence occupancy, outside storage, none planned, no exterior signage, no plan for special delivery vehicles. Um, yeah, I can't see anything in there that, that, uh, that stands out to me as egregious or troublesome. And Mary, this is a question for you, just to be clear. This is, the state separates cultivation and packaging from sale, right? At least this I will tell you that there is a state process that is entirely separate from us. Okay, then maybe I'll ask it this way. We, the city of Burlington, under the home occupation, at least in this application, is separating the cultivation, drying, and packaging from the sale thereof. Because I think with the home occupation, it's not customer facing. You don't have people, come, you don't have customers coming to the business, the property. There, there are no, there will be no retail sales there. Okay. That is correct. Yeah, that's not the I, wanted, I wanted to confirm that. Yeah, it's not, it's not stated as a condition, but I would add that as a condition if we approved it, just so that we're clear um, that there'll be no retail sale of cannabis from this location, because I think that would require a different level of review from us. That would require a different level of review from you and from the state. Right. Yes, that's correct. So I just want to state that because we'll be getting a few of these over time and we want to be clear with people the difference between cultivation and sale licenses. That is written into the law though, just so you know. Sometimes it needs to be stated twice. Mm -hmm. Understood. 
under the special use regulations, AJ, number 11 is exactly that question, and he has defined it in his home occupation submission that there will be no retail sales. Great. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, any members of the board have any questions on this one? Yeah. Um, you say that um, there's going to be no ventilation Correct. In, in the space. The plants need a certain amount of fresh air. Correct. Right? So um, if you're getting fresh air here, you're going to be exhausting air also, right? Right back into the dwelling. Fresh air from outside? Nope. No? No, plants need carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight, right? And also oxygen, depending on the time of the, the, the day that they're growing. So they can all get that from the same air that we're breathing. I guess, thank you. I guess my, my question is, do you have any sort of intake fan into, into the house, anywhere in the? Other than the kitchen, no. So and what are you of setting? the venting for the, the bathroom. What are you just setting up like a, like a tent with a light system? Or? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. That's that's the idea. So it's just whatever air is in your garage circulating, we'll just feed those? In the basement. Oh, basement, okay. Yeah, we'll feed those, exactly. So there's, yeah, there's no exterior changes to the, the property whatsoever. And I know someone in the, uh, the, the questions, there was questions about potential light um, pollution coming from the, the tents themselves. Those are all, I mean, they're inside the tent with the idea being that the light is contained, so that's not going to, yeah. to be a, a, an issue, so to speak. So I think there was another one about potential combustibles or, or other things that might be a, a fire issue. And I would be more, I would be interested to know what uh, those actual questions were or concerns were, because, um, yeah. My, my brain starts to go sideways, especially with my name, Ishmael Ahmed. Uh, the, the, I think public, I don't know how the fire safety review is done. The building official has specific authority for the um, safety and fire code. There is a specific standard for cannabis review, um, and there is an excerpt in there from a, a response from the building official. So yeah. he waits for it this application to go through our process, okay. and then he has the authority to review the application right. himself. So this, that wouldn't be the place, this is not the place to, to resolve those questions? No, the fire marshal will do that with okay. you. Yes. This is wonderful. I, this is like new for everyone. So this We're is, all this learning is here. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad I can help in that. <laughs> so. Any other questions? No? once, twice, thrice, sold. Um, with that, we'll close the hearing. Um, we'll talk about it after our hearing's conduct, uh, concluded tonight, and we'll vote on it, and then um, get a decision out quickly. I guess I do have a question. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your time. The, um, so this is specifically for cannabis production. Correct. Now, if I wanted to use the same space for, say, mycelium, like for, for growing other... Don't do that. <laughs> Don't go down that road. Yeah. Just, say, just um, say, you applied for cannabis cultivation. We closed the hearing. Let us make that decision. Then I will ask my questions, questions later. later day. Right. Somewhere else that's, that's, later. That makes but, but perfect I think, sense. I just want to say something. So if we, okay. if, if I... Well, well, let's just okay. ask questions okay. later. later. Okay. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we, 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 we've come to the point, we've, we, we've gotten through the uh, procedure, and this is a good place to stop. Yep. Yep. Get up off the table. <laughs> yep, we're done. You're welcome the mic. back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you just might see me back. So, next on our agenda, 7173 Peru we Street. Deferred. We deferred. We are to hear yep. that. Great, thank you. And then um, 1093 North Ave, CP 23116, a request by the City of Burlington Department of Public Works. Is the applicant here? Yes, I am. Okay. AJ, I'm going to recuse. Oh, yeah, you, yep. I wouldn't go far. I won't. Um, so, before I swear you in, I have a question for the board. Is there anyone else here to speak on this application? No? Um, I was wondering, this seemed 
relatively minor, and I was wondering if the board would have any objection to treating it as a consent agenda item. I don't feel like we really need testimony from the applicant on this one. It seems pretty small. I agree. All right. So um, what that means, unless you have questions for us and have read the staff report and are okay with it, is we would just not open a public hearing and approve it on a consent agenda. Yeah, that works for me. I'm fine with everything on the staff report. Okay. Um, uh, AJ, just real, I'm going to be admonished. No, you're not going to be so, uh, real, uh, real quickly, uh, this did go to Conservation Board last night, and they unanimously uh, supported it. Oh, wow. So that was an open end in the staff report. So now it's okay. closed. All right. I was about to say they unanimously did not approve it. I'd be like, well, that would change <laughs> <laughs> um, Can I get a motion? So moved. All right. <laughs> All yeah. Brooks. All those in favor, second? Second. Caitlin. All those in favor of approving ZP 23116, 1093 North Avenue? Aye. That's everybody. When does this start, construction? Um, well, hopefully within this month. Uh, we've got our contractor hired for this. Ah. So another break in the bike path. Yes, yes. We'll be detouring everybody through the parking lot there. They'll be building a little side. I usually bike through at about 6 in the morning. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you won't be interfering with construction. It'll be perfect. Uh, Thank you. Um, and with that, I believe that concludes our public hearing agenda for tonight and our meeting.